Hey everyone and welcome to Storytime. My name is Jake and today we are going to be looking at the subreddit r slash malicious compliance. So sit back, relax and enjoy some satisfying stories. Won't get paid if I go home? Okay. This one is kind of in progress. I am a company truck driver and if the truck breaks down, I get breakdown pay. Because obviously I can't make money if I am paid by the mile. Q malicious compliance. Truck has broken, so I call in and offer a way to save some money. I live on the other side of the state I am currently in, so why not just go home until the truck is fixed, and instead of spending a bunch of money on hotel, just buy me a bus ticket back. Dispatcher says if I go home, I won't be eligible for breakdown pay. I say, okay, I'd rather go home anyway, no point sitting around doing nothing. So, I think, wait a minute, I can have my cake and eat it too, and this company has already stiffed me on about $1,700, unrelated, so I called dispatcher back. Yeah, that plan won't work, I'm going to need a hotel room. Okay. Meanwhile, I just enact my original plan to pop home and back to attend an event I wanted to go to and make sure my cats get some attention from me. After checking into the hotel room and throwing out the do not disturb sign, at least this way I have it ready when I get back to it, this also means that I get breakdown pay because I didn't go home. Edit, the dealership the truck is at told me it would not be gotten to until Monday, when I got there on Friday afternoon. I'll be playing games all week I expect until it's done, while they make one more hotel reservation per night and make me walk back and forth. Whatever. Also, if they fire me, all it will do is make me happy, because I know that I can probably get another job fairly easily at this point. I can't tell if he's breaking the rules or not, because if his company finds out they'll probably say he's like breaking them, but technically he is staying at the hotel, just what he does in his free time is up to him. I know you almost died, but can you work tomorrow? I worked as a rescue technician for a safety and rescue company that provides various emergency medical services at construction and hazardous zones. Our scheduling manager was notorious for doing and saying whatever he felt to get empty shifts filled, ironically circumventing a lot of job safety regulations. But on this particular Sunday, I was involuntary volunteered to work. On the way to a job site, I was involved in a car crash that resulted in our truck turning into an accordion and burning to the frame on a major interstate. Gotta love drunk drivers, right? Luckily, my partner and I had relatively minor injuries. Among the trivial scratches and various cuts, I had internal bruising in one thigh and knee bad enough to warrant crutches after being discharged from the hospital later that day. HR was very understanding and asked if I was still able to at least come to the office for light duty instead of claiming wages from workers comp. See, as comp was already paying for medical treatment, a new phone and laptop of my choosing, and I could still drive, I said sure. My job had no light duties, so I basically came to the main office and licked stamps. This continued for about three work days. On the fourth day, scheduling manager decided I was ready to go to a refinery and climb around machinery. He bursts into the vestibule I was using as a workspace and tosses a job sheet on my desk. Nobody wants to come in. We're short-handed today, so you need to be at this refinery, which is 105 miles away, in an hour. You can take truck number 23. Sorry, manager, I'm still on light duty. Are you serious? How long are you going to milk this out, dude? I need you to do some real work tomorrow. I have too many jobs going on. I'll let you know if anything changes. I'm sure it won't look good to the refinery if I show up limping on a crutch when I'm supposed to be dragging people out of crawl spaces. The next morning, I wake up to an email with a job assignment. Same refinery, same position. I call HR and he says he'll take care of it and to come into the office for light duty. Scheduling manager is waiting for me at the door. 
Really, man? We just talked about this. Let me clue you into something. We don't have light duty here. You need to be put on a job site your next shift, or I'm going to put you on unpaid time off. Your discharge papers didn't say you can't work. Um, the HR guy told me to take it easy until I feel better. Nobody else is pushing the issue, but you have it your way, scheduling manager. At this point, I was starting to walk without my crutch in short bursts. I was expecting to try a job site on Monday if the weekend showed more improvement, but after these interactions, I felt petty. The scheduling manager was vital and interweaved with the company. He had been there for 16 years or so, so getting him in trouble wasn't an option. I knew to drive a point home, I had to aim for the only thing that mattered, his empty shifts. I went to HR to apologize for the paperwork he's about to file. I tell him I'm leaving after lunch to make a doctor's appointment. Not only was there still deep bruising, but the doctor diagnosed me with sprained adduction and abduction muscles. Estimated return date, three weeks. I happily composed an email to the scheduling manager and attached the note. He replied with a flurry of angry emails, which I forwarded to HR with my original doctor's note. HR guy told me I could either stay home and take the compensation pay or come into the office daily at my leisure, leaving any time after lunch. He promised that the scheduling manager wouldn't bother me and I could occupy the spare office in the unused half of the building. I gladly took the latter offer and for the next three weeks I was sitting in my office playing MMOs on my laptop all morning, going home at 12.30. Never really had an issue after that. In fact, he never contacted me directly after that and all my scheduling was given as a general memo by the secretary. I did leave for another job two months later, and to this day, I get emails asking me to do contracted jobs for them. I'm really surprised the HR guy was actually nice, because you don't see a lot of those in these stories. No overtime, please adhere to the rules. Well, problem was that the rules were established a total of four times, in different times. I started working as an engineer in a multinational company. Decent pay, really good benefits, etc. Only catch was that I was hired through a recruiting company, hence the good benefits. So I was basically a contractor. Contract was simple. It specified hours, vacations, and important overtime pay. I start working and first weeks were good. No overtime needed. Not a fan of it either. But then comes the need to stay late. So I ask one of my managers if there was no issue with the overtime, to which he replied that my position is salary. Not really his fault, that's what he was told. So no overtime. No problem, not a fan. Then I ask about what are the rules then. He had no idea and I was the first salary contractor employee he had. We ask the HR rep and she gives the rules that specify that any extra time worked could be compensated with paid leave, and I had to keep track of my hours. Good enough, I complied, didn't even use all the hours. Time passed, then a few loaded days at the end of the month, and at the start of the month I went to the hospital to help a friend, and was counting on using the extra hours with paid leave only to find out that I couldn't, as now I was being told that I could only use them at the month they happened, so no hours to spend. I adjusted and complied again, even when they screwed me out of one full day of paid leave. Time passes again, and I'm starting to stack hours, and can't even use them due to the project I was working on. So one Friday, I'm asked to come in on a Saturday, and it's almost the end of the month, and ask if just this once I could have overtime instead of comp, and my other manager, had two, both direct employees, says that is not possible, that we have to follow the rules. 
To which I state that she remembers that I'm outsourced and have a contract that states I have to be paid overtime and that I only get verbal confusing rules about this. She was already giving me too much workload and we had our small professional differences due to the urgency of the project and she said that she would check with the new HR supervisor about my case. She writes an email where HR states a new set of rules. Number 1. Any extra time during the week must be used within the same week. And number 2. To get a paid leave day, I would have to work at least 6 hours on a Saturday, and those Saturdays had 2 months expiration date to be used. This new set of rules practically voids all the hours I stacked and I wasn't having it anymore. Enter malicious compliance. Come July and August, I started complying, not staying during the week unless I was given notice that I would come late next day. They didn't like it but had no say in this since they made the rules. And when asked about going 2-4 to four hours on Saturday, I would say yes and work exactly 6 hours to get a paid leave day, 9.5 hours. By September, I had a few paid leave days and used all of them on Fridays. Since they could not ask me by phone to come on Saturday, so no Saturdays. They weren't pleased either because they had to pay overtime to the other employees to get things done. As a side note, I never neglected my work, it was all a hands on deck situation for many months and they liked booking me since they didn't have to pay me overtime. When mid-September rolls around, I gave my two weeks notice, I got a better job, where like half of the days were paid leave days. Hey, I complied with the rules and it was petty at best, but I felt like I won the final round. Not gonna lie, that sounds like a pretty poor company to work for, so I'm glad he got a new job. I didn't leave the chair. When I was in early elementary school, I was really bad about not wanting to eat all of the meat my mother cooked. This is because my mother overcooks everything. I would often wait until everyone else left the room and then toss the chewed meat into the trash can if I was finding myself unable to choke it down with a glass of water. Or if I had been drinking so much water I was regurgitating the water-meat combination. My mother got wise to my throwing meat in the trash one night and wrapped a belt around my chair to keep me from getting up. She told me not to leave that chair until I finished eating. Meanwhile, the rest of my family went into the living room to watch a movie. After finding myself still unable to finish, I decided to rebel. The chair was too tall and heavy for me to stand up, but I could rock the chair off three legs and rotate around the still grounded one. I grabbed my plate and eventually managed to walk the chair out of the kitchen and into the living room to watch the movie. My mother took the belt off and disposed of the rest of my dinner. I never understood why parents were so like keen on people finishing all the food. My parents did it as well, but like if you don't want the food then you're not going to eat it. Like why, why does it matter? A story from my childhood. So as a little kid I was not a good student. Never rude or mean, but I didn't do homework and often got in trouble because of it. One particular time I got in trouble because I tried to watch cartoons instead of doing my homework. My mum told me I was not allowed to watch Cartoon Network for a week. My mum came home from work the next day and I was sitting down watching cartoons to her chagrin. When she asked what I was doing, I told her that I was not watching Cartoon Network, I was watching Nickelodeon. Naturally, she had to make her punishment more specific. No TV shows. The next day, I was watching a movie on TV. She's ticked. No TV. The next day, I had put a DVD in the computer and was watching a movie on that. Mum, you said no TV. I'm not using the TV. At this point, clearly fed up, she just said nothing electric that has a battery or plugs into the wall. I still didn't do my homework. I just went into my room and read a book. My mum never made that mistake again. From then on, she gave a lot of blanket statements regarding what I could or could not do. 
I am now a teacher. I feel very bad for my teachers and parents. On my first year teaching, I met a kid who acted exactly as I did in school. And to prove it was karma, he had the same name as me. <laughs> and I bet the teacher that taught them was probably like them and they became a teacher and the cycle just continues. Hey everyone, I hope you all had a really good day and that you enjoyed that video. If you want to check out some other videos, then click on screen right now or check out the playlist down below. If you enjoyed that video, then please do leave a like. And if you want to submit your own stories, then you can do so by joining the Discord in the top link in the description. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.